South Dakota. And it's been about 25 years since I've been here, but I can tell you, just from the looks of this street, not a lot has changed. The population of this town is 754. This town dates back to 1907, and it was the Chicago and Northwestern Railroad that made this town happen. Hi, so welcome to this episode of History Hunters. I'm here in Wall, South Dakota, here at the famous Wall Drug Store. It's probably one of the most famous attractions along Highway 90 here in South Dakota. This facility started out in 1931 by a pharmacist by the name of Ted Husted. He wanted a way to find some new business to get some travelers off of Highway 90, so he came up with the ingenious idea of promising that if people would stop by, he would give them ice water. Seemed like a small thing, but he built a whole empire on it. I'll tell you all about it on this episode of History Hunters. It's crazy to think that a drugstore would be a huge attraction in a small town in South Dakota, but that is the case. This has been a huge draw for tourists, especially the tourists that head out to the Badlands and also the people who head out to the Black Hills and Crazy Horse and Mount Rushmore. Crazy to think that this whole idea of serving ice water was how he got people to pull off the highway. Now, of course, it looked a lot different back in the 1930s and 1940s, Walter Ted Houston was a Nebraska native. He had graduated from pharmacy school in the 1920s, late 1920s. Of course, that was when the stock market crashed. Most everybody here in this town were poor farmers, and uh, business was really tough. And he and Dorothy gave it five years, and they decided if they didn't make it here in five years, that they would just fold up and move somewhere else. One of the requirements that he had was that so he wanted to settle in a small town with a Catholic church. He found a Catholic church here in Lowell, South Dakota, and uh, he decided to stay. And one day, Dorothy hit upon the idea, hey, let's offer free ice water to people so that they would have a reason to pull off. And then while they were here, they would sell all kinds of things to them. So let's go into this place. This is a really crazy place. Oh boy, I can't even see in here. Look at this. Something like from Knott's Berry Farm. Old town entryway here. guys smoke on a cigarette that's not correct anymore well look at that here's an actual drugstore there's an actual drugstore here that's a little too late for this guy though Here's an article about the death of the founder of Wall Drugstore, Ted Houston. Pappy wants to tell my fortune. Here's another fortune teller, Zoltar. I am Zoltar, the Great Gypsy, and I can see your fortune. Come see it too, no? I don't think so. Calamity Chained Jewelry Emporium. A giant buffalo head up there. A fashion mailbox. Here's Buffalo Bill here. This is a really crazy thing. Let's 
so you come out the back here and there is a wall drug back yard let's go see what this is all about all kinds of coin operated machinery here's a giant jackalope did you know they existed jackrabbit antelope and it talks about the wall drug store here since 1931. If you want some cold water. How's the water? Tastes good. Tastes like good cold yeah, water. Good. I have a confession to make. The water that they serve here doesn't taste that good and it's not very cold. <laughs> Here's an old kind of reproduction of a railroad station. And I don't know what's going on with this water tower, but apparently it's got some problems. Got some water pot popping up here and there. Here's a reproduction, of course, of Mount Rushmore. Almost on a comical day now. He doesn't like me. As I was saying, Mount Rushmore, kind of with a comical vein. Of course, there we go. Another buffalo. They are majestic creatures. Here we got another building back here. A lot of newspaper articles on the wall here. This place has probably been plastered in just about every newspaper and magazine around. such as this one, wall drug signs, worldwide point to it. They have the dreadful Tyrannosaurus Rex here. There he is. He's ready to devour me. Oh my gosh. He doesn't look that scary though. He almost looks mechanical. With this warning, he eats every 12 minutes. He's hangry. And here is Ted and Dorothy. Portraits here hang. Crazy. Oh, here he goes. Here he goes. So, <laughs> I was going to go show you this letter that's been laminated from John F. Kennedy. Very much enjoyed seeing you in Aberdeen recently. And then, whatever signature was on it, it's faded away. Probably a secretarial signature anyway. I don't know what that is. I don't think it's natural though. That guy was natural. 
No, he's very unnatural. Here's an old bench, the original wall drug elixir. And one of those old fashioned way horoscope machines to step on the scales and you have your horoscope right to you. Don't look now, but I think there's a robbery that's going to take place. Somebody's cheating at poker. I don't know, they look like some mean people in there. It almost looks like Mark Twain in there, he's in trouble with Wild Bill Hickok. Um, no thanks, I am taken. I think things have closed for the season. It's after the Labor Day weekend and uh, looks like you could pan for gold here. <clears throat> Not sure that the gold was really real, if you know what I mean. I don't know. I think that guy's selling some snake oil. Oh. Wall drug tonic. I thought he was selling snake oil. He doesn't look like he could be trusted. Hugh Hockaday, died in 1968. He built this display for Wall Drug in 1957. He was a great artist and dear friend of the Husteds. And uh, this is him. Being that they were religious people, the Husteds included a chapel in their quirky establishment. It's a very cool old replica of a stagecoach up there. I wouldn't mind having that myself. There's some branding irons on the wall up here. Plenty of places to eat in here. Here's a cafe. Shops galore, that's all I can say. Get your own coffee mug here. Ice cream counter too. Soft serve or dish. I think I'm a little disappointed in the fact that some of the coin-operated weird machines were dancing chickens and all kinds of weird things that uh, were here a long time ago. I didn't see them here, so I was a little disappointed in that. I had one more thing I needed to do before leaving Wall. came out here to the Wall Cemetery in Wall, South Dakota. I want to pay tribute to Ted and Dorothy Husted, the founders of Wall Drugstore. Now chances are if you've been anywhere, this part of the country, Montana, there's road signs all along the way that call you to come to Wall Drugstore. It's a, an ingenious marketing scheme and uh, it worked very well for the Husteds. They built this tremendous business here in Wall. And I would say it's probably one of the major attractions here in South Dakota. Wall Drug maintains an estimated 300 signs along the I-90 corridor spanning across South Dakota, Wyoming, and Western Minnesota. The farthest sign away is in Grable, Wyoming, some 394 miles from Wall. But Wall Drug enthusiasts have posted their own brand of signs in places like India, Africa, Europe, and even Antarctica over 11,500 miles away. 
Even military personnel longing for home have participated in the tradition. It seems that wall drug signs instill a sense of comfort for some serving overseas. During World War II, one army tank was posted with a sign declaring that wall drug was just 4,136 miles away. Homesick Navy submariners painted and posted a sign in 1986 noting that wall drug was 400 feet up and 5,600 miles away. A very lonely day out here. It's Wednesday and there's not a soul in here except us, but I wanted to pay tribute to them. They are buried over here. There is a little war memorial and the Husteads are, are buried right across from it. Now I know my good friend, Reddy, Reddy for history, came out here one time and I was kind of envious of the fact that he was able to come up here and show you this grave. So I know he's been here. I'm just giving a shout out to him. And there's the marker for the Houston. Let's see if it says anything in the back. Now this is the Houston family plot, but the ones we specifically want to come and pay tribute to are Ted. Ted Houston, husband of Dorothy, father of Bill, Mary, Catherine, and Charles. He lived from 1902 to 1999. And if you look up here, you'll see it says wall drug. And over there, a little pharmacist emblem. And they were Catholic. There's a little Catholic marker here for Mary and baby Jesus. Right next to him. It's his wife, like she passed away before he did, Dorothy Rush Husted, wife of said children as well. She lived from 1904 to 1995. <laughs> and very funny over here, it says free ice water. She's the one that came up with that entire idea of offering free ice water to attract people off of the freeway. And Bill had taken over the business. And you can see he passed away in 1999. Bill Husted. Looks like he also was a pharmacist according to the, the marking there in the corner. I can't make out what that is. Uh, shows a cowboy holding a saddle. Marjorie wife of Bill and up there in the corner is a picture of a dog and the Eiffel Tower she must have been interested in both and here's her son passed away at the age of 21 tragically in 1977 Catholic family somebody's got a solar lit angel I think most Americans are inspired by the success stories of the people like the Husteds who faced tremendous obstacles running a successful business, and especially during the Great Depression. And then a simple idea of offering free ice water to travelers just to get them to come into their store. It's just really a, a unique concept, which uh, should inspire all business people to think outside the box. like. Dorothy did. And because of it, the whole family's legacy was changed. I would always appreciate hearing what you thought of the video. And if you've been to the Wall Drug Store, how long ago was it? What did you think of it? Was it a waste of time for you? Or did you find it kind of a fascinating place? Like I said, I've been here twice before, and it appears that a lot of changes have taken place. And uh, like I said, the dancing chickens and, and those type of little quirky little coin operator machines, I didn't see too many of them. So they must have fallen apart. <laughs> anyway, thank you for joining us on this episode of History Hunters.